Welcome back to another edition of Vikings Film Room, brought to you by the Vikings Entertainment Network. I'm your host, Pete Bursich. So besides the obvious, what do the Minnesota Vikings have to do to finally get one in the W column? Well, we're facing another winless team in the Los Angeles Chargers, so why don't we dive into the film and find out exactly what the Minnesota Vikings have to do to get that first W. The first thing that the Minnesota Vikings have to do to win this game is stay out of third and long. And this is exactly why. These Chargers have some people that can get after the quarterback. We're going to watch the Tennessee Titans on this first play. Remember this guy, Khalil Mack from the Chicago Bears? Yeah, he's still there. He's still playing well. You may not know this guy, Tuli Tua Pelotu. He's a second round draft pick out of the University of Southern California. He's pretty good too. So just take a look at this and watch what they do to this Tannehill pocket. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. Pressure, closing it, collapsing. He tries to step up. One guy following him, Mac getting in there. Ball's flying loose. I mean, this is a disaster for the Tennessee Titans. All right, we saw the pocket collapse on Tannehill, and this guy wasn't even on the field yet. Joey Bosa, can't forget about him. That's three pretty good pass rushers, and you're gonna see exactly here how they like to use the stunts to get their guys free. This is what we used to call a little wham stunt back in the day. Nose tackle loops one way, safety comes in the other way. The pressure comes from the inside, and what Bosa does, he does a great job of holding the edge. When the pressure comes up the middle, Bosa's right there to make the sack. One of five Tannehill sacks, by the way. Now, something I expect to see more of this Sunday, Khalil Mack over on that side. But look, they have Tui Pelotu right here on the inside, right next to Joey Bosa. So there are three elite pass rushers on this field at the same time. So how do they use them? Well, they run stunts. And in this case, you're going to get Pelotu to penetrate this B gap right here and get Bosa to loop around the inside. Watch how they absolutely destroy this combo block. Pelotu jumping through, Bosa underneath. Both of them get to the quarterback. They just destroyed that combo block. So our offensive line needs to be ready. Now that we saw the Vikings have to stay out of third and long because of the pass rush, but there's opportunities, play action opportunities, and defenses don't bite on play actions on third and long. So on base downs, third and short, when you might just run the football, there are going to be opportunities. In this case, you'll see Tennessee, they're gonna run this, the fake kind of zone route. Tannehill gets to the top of his drop, but look what's happening down the field. You have a clearing route down here on the bottom to pull out Asante Samuel, and now you have this deep over route. We've seen this out of JJ and this, this offense a million times, but watch how this play actually develops. As this receiver is coming over, there is nobody in this area. Nobody. There's no there are four guys up here. There's only two guys on top. There is no one here. This is going to be screaming to Kevin O'Connell and saying, we're going to take advantage of this. Now, what's interesting, this is a clearing route. Tannehill decides, you know, I'm going to throw the ball to the clearing route. He had about a yard on Asante. Samuel was able to make the tackle almost a touchdown. I guarantee our offense is drooling when they see this. Another example of opportunities in the play action deep type of game. Another play against Tennessee. You get the regular handoff. This safety is looking over here. He should be paying attention over there because when this ball goes in the air, I think this is a mix-up of some sort. They look like they have a cover two type shell. I don't know what they're doing over there, but what do you see? Right? You see a Jordan Addison getting by the corner, somebody getting deep. Look at the middle of the field. Deep middle of the field, wide open. Another huge play. Another huge opportunity opened up by the play-action passing game. And our final example of the play-action pass, we're going to see exactly why Tennessee ran the plays that they did. They have Tyreek Hill up top. He's kind of tight. You have Waddle here in the slot. A lot of speed right there, right? Here we go. Pull the guard. Play fake. Tua gets to the top of his drop, but look what we're seeing down here. We're seeing a, a crossing route with the deep over. Now, this safety gets himself turned around. I'm really not sure exactly what he's doing, but there's opportunities here. All on this side of the field, but Tua decides, yeah, I'm gonna throw it deep all the way across. Speed turn by the safety. If that ball is not under thrown, that is a Tyreek Hill touchdown. Play action passing game is gonna be big. All right, the next big thing the Vikings have to take care of in order to get a W are these guys. Justin Herbert, quarterback, and then Keenan Allen, the wide receiver. He's been there forever, but they're still a very, very good combination, and they're going to find a way to get Keenan Allen the ball. This first play is very, very interesting because of Keenan Allen himself. Watch his release. Watch how he takes his time. As he gets off the football, he's getting around that corner. He's just taking his time. He hasn't really opened it up. Why? 
because they want this free safety, who's in cover two, to squeeze this post route. Get somebody deep. Now you create a lot of space in between the corner, who's sinking after, you know, after the jam and funnel outside. He's sinking, but look at this area that's wide open. So it's the timing of this play. That's the experience of Keenan Allen. He knows how to run routes. He's not just running a go route. He's running a slow go route, at least off the beginning. Look at that ball by Herbert. Beautiful ball. Right on the money, Keenan Allen actually had an opportunity to cut back. This is a very, very good combo we're going up against. Another thing that stands out on film is when the ball is supposed to go to Keenan Allen, it goes to Keenan Allen. This is a perfect example. Watch the nose tackle. This is important because he provides immediate pressure on the quarterback. So as he has pressure in his face, this is supposed to be a slant route up here. How do we know that? because this guy is running a post. This is the old Ernie Zampezi route. They wanted Keenan Allen to come in right behind him and hit him on that quick slant route. But he is, look at him, he's covered. He's covered like, like with a blanket. There's no way he could throw him the football. But the athleticism of Herbert gets him out of trouble, spins around, and in a last ditch effort, throws a jump ball, 50-50 ball. Allen comes down with it for the touchdown. So Keenan Allen's up there in age, so you may want to you know, play some man-to-man -man against them. We know the Miami defense, they love man-to-man, -man, but watch how they scheme this. You have the two receivers up on top. They know they have a linebacker walked out, a linebacker walked out, so they have themselves a mismatch. So what do they do? Again, Allen, slow off the ball. He's letting this receiver just kind of get in the way, and he's going to rub right behind him, the old switch route. And in that space between the linebacker and the safety, that ball is delivered. It's delivered right on time. And the Vikings don't want that to happen because we don't want to see our coaches looking like this guy. Pants all hiked up, just for clemped, not very happy. We don't want to see any of that in our sidelines. We want to get that first W. Another way the Chargers use Allen in the red zone, you know, whip screen. That's exactly what they like to do up top, right? So you're just going to get the basic play. The two defensive backs want to get in here. Allen's just going to block the outside one and get it up. Hopefully you can get the first down, right? Wrong. Allen is a KG vet. He fakes the stock block, and there it is. There's that gap between corner and safety. Touchdown for the Chargers. Another facet of Justin Herbert's game is his ability to use the tight ends, and he likes to use them vertically. This is an example defensively. If you're going to disguise, you got to make sure you don't sacrifice position on the field because Herbert right now thinks he's getting some type of too deep. Problem is, is they're just showing it. That safety comes down. Now look at the separation. This is the deep middle safety. He started way down here. So he's already got too much ground to cover. And watch this corner. He needs the midpoint, the two verticals. He doesn't. That just gives Herbert a small window. But the arm strength, the accuracy, puts that thing right on the money. That's a big play. Herbert's pretty good. And finally, Herbert, he can run the play action too. This is a story as old as mankind, right? We've seen it how many times? You get the play action, you get the linebackers to step up, and then what do you do? You hit the tight end right behind them. We saw it last week. I'm sure we're gonna see it next week, but there it is. The play fake, tight end up the seam. Herbert gets rid of that football, but again, it's where he locates it and the strength of his arm. So let's review. Outside of the obvious, the Vikings need to do what? Stay out of third and long, keep track of Keenan Allen, and oh, by the way, take advantage of some play action opportunities. We do that, the Vikings will get one in the W column.